Let's take a look at our first problem and you'll see exactly how it works. I promise it's very easy to understand. Let's take a look at the number 6.4. Two, two. Now, before we round anything, I want to just talk briefly again, what does this actually mean? Well, if you cover up the decimal, the number that we have is like, let's say six loaves of bread, right? That's what that number means. But the decimal point and the numbers after the decimal point basically tell us how close we are to the next whole number. Remember, the numbers after the decimal point just tell us the fractional part of the number. The closer these numbers beyond the decimal are to 999, that means the closer we'll be to the next whole number, which is just seven loaves of bread. And of course, the closer these numbers beyond the decimal are to 000, the closer we'll be to the number six. So the numbers beyond the decimal are only there to really tell you how close you are to the next whole number. So we really have a choice here when we're rounding this guy to the nearest whole number. When we say the nearest whole number means we're gonna round this digit right here. That means our choices are as follows. We're either going to round up, in which case it's going to be going up to seven loaves of bread, or we're going to round down, which means we're going to stay at six loaves of bread. This is called rounding up to the next whole number and staying where you are, staying, staying to, the, uh, to the whole number that you have is called rounding down. So, here we have the decimal part, which is telling us basically how close we are to the next whole number. If it's 6.5 exactly, anything 0.5 is exactly halfway to the next whole number. And you can see that we are less than that because this is 0.422, so we're going to be rounding down. The way you take a look at this is you say, well, I'm rounding this digit. Look next door and see, is this digit, the four, is it less than five? And of course, four is less than five, and that means we're going to be rounding down. So the number that we have as our answer is six. If this number here, if this digit were five or six or seven or eight or nine, then we would round up and our answer would be seven. So all of these problems are going to function the same way. We're gonna round all of these to the nearest whole number. And to do that, we look next door just beyond the decimal. So let's take a look at the next problem, 19.235. So again, we have a choice. This is 19 apples, let's say, and the decimal is telling us how close we are to 20 apples. If you were to get to 0.999, you would be really, really close to the 20, to getting to 20 apples. And if you were uh, very much lower numbers, 0 0.000, let's say, you would be you know, much closer to 19. The smaller these numbers you are, then the closer you are to 19, and the larger these numbers you have here, the closer you are to 20. So if we're rounding whole numbers, you're either going to round this thing up to the number 20, or you're gonna round them down, which means you basically stay on the number 19. So those are your only two choices, either round up or round down. To figure it out, you look next door, beyond the decimal point, beyond the whole number. Because we're rounding to the nearest whole number, look here at the two. Two is less than five, that means we round down, and the answer is 19. All right, let's take a look at the next problem. Let's say we have 5.882. Same story, we're rounding to the nearest whole number. That means we can either go up and round up to the next whole number, which is six, or we can round down, which means we stay on the number five. So to determine what to do, take a look next door. We have an eight. We don't care about any of these digits over here. We only look at the next door uh, digit here, the tenths place. This is five or bigger, which means we round up. So we're gonna have an answer of six. All right, now that we have the hang of it, the remaining problems just kind of cruise along and, you know, we're doing them all the same way. We're just getting a little practice. Let's take a look at the number 72.71. So we're rounding to the nearest whole number. That means this is 72 and then a fraction of another, whatever it is you're talking about, 72 lemons. And then we have a little bit of a fraction of a lemon on top of that. So we can either round this thing up to 73 lemons or we can round down and stay down here at 72 lemons. So what do we do? We look next door beyond the whole number to the decimal. Now it's a seven. We don't care about the one. We're not looking at that. We only care about the next, the next digit beyond the whole number, in this case, a seven. That's, of course, five or bigger, which means we round up to 73. All right, next problem. Let's take a look at 97.5. Rounding to the nearest whole number means that this thing can either go up to be 98 buffaloes or whatever it is you're talking about, or it can round down and stay at 97. Now, in order to figure it out, we look next door beyond the whole number into the first digit of the decimal. It's a five. Now, remember, 
in order to uh, determine what to do, if you have a five, six, seven, eight, or nine, uh, you go up. So since we have a five here, we're rounding up. And so the answer here is 98. If you were to have something smaller than five, then of course you just round down. All right, let's take a look at the number 8.42. So the whole number here is eight, and we're rounding to the nearest whole number, which means you either go up to nine or you round down and stay down at the number eight. How do we figure it out? We look next door to the tenths place. We have a four. Of course, that's less than five, and that means we round down to the number eight. Round down to the number eight. All right, we're almost done. Let's take a look at, uh, let's see, the number 99.198. 99.198. What is the whole number here? The whole number is 99. The fractional part tells us how close we are to the next whole number, which is 100. So we're either going to round up to the number 100 or we're going to round down and basically stay down here at the number 99. So what do we do? You only look at the next digit over. You don't care about any of these. We're looking at the number one here in the tenths place. Of course, that's less than five, so we round down and we stay down at 99. I told you these would go a lot faster once we get going. That's exactly what we're doing here, so just have a few more to round it out. Let's take a look at 67 decimal 67. What is the whole number here? It's 67. So we can either round up to the next whole number, 68, or we can round down and stay down here at 67. What do we do to figure it out? Look to the tenths position just past the decimal. That is a six. All right, so we look at the six, which of course is larger than five, which means we round up to the number 68. All right, and we have our last problem. Let's take a look at 110 decimal 359. So what is the whole number here? The whole number is everything in front of the decimal. It's 110. So we can either round up to what would come after this, 111, or we can round down, which means we stay down here at 110. How do we decide? We take a look just beyond the decimal to the tenths place. We don't care about any of these, only the three. So of course that's less than five. It's either four, three, two, one, or zero. And of course we have a three there, which means we round down to 110. So you might say, why do we care about rounding numbers? Let me give you a practical example, a real reason why you would care. Let's say you're in the grocery store. Let's say you're trying to buy a bunch of stuff. So everything has a price, right? Some things, uh, or let's say we had something $67.67. Let's say we had something uh, $8.42. Because when we talk about money, the whole number is the number of dollars. And then what comes past the decimal is the number of cents. But sometimes it's difficult to add all of those numbers together if you're just trying to kind of have an idea about how much you need to have in your pocket to pay for it. So what you can do is you can round these numbers to the nearest whole number, $99, $68, $110, and you can either add them in your head a lot faster, or even if you have a calculator, it'll be faster to add the whole numbers together. Now, of course, it's not exact when you round things. It's not exact, but that's not the point. The point is to be able to do, uh, make an estimate of something rapidly so that you're not you know, wasting, I should say wasting your time. Sometimes it's great to have an exact accurate answer, but sometimes even in science and engineering, we make an estimate in order to make the calculations faster. So what I'd like you to do is go through all of these problems, solve them yourself, and then when you're getting the right answer, follow me on to part two, and we'll wrap up the idea of rounding to the nearest whole number. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.